Amen. We have the very honor of having Pastor Wisdom. Amen. That's going to bring the word today. And let's pray that God use him in a mighty way. Amen. Let's listen and let's participate in what thus says the Lord. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. I don't know if that clap is for me or is for God. Hallelujah. If it's for the Lord, then you can do better than that. Now, the Bible says the children of Israel, they encountered Jericho. These guys were facing the wall, and they were shouting against the wall. The wall was there, but they were shouting against the wall. They didn't shout when the wall went down. But they were shouting whilst the wall was there. Sometimes you want to see the victory before you shout. Sometimes you want to see the breakthrough before you shout. Sometimes you want to see the healing before you shout. But these guys, they didn't see the wall falling, but they were shouting. I tell you that pain will be there, but don't wait for the pain to leave before you shout. Because in your shouting, that wall will go down. In your shouting, that pain will leave your body. In your shouting, that sickness will leave your body. In your shouting, that demon will repossess your body. There is a lot in the realms of the spirit. I feel it so much. I don't know how much you can carry this morning. I don't know how much you can receive this morning, but the atmosphere is very strong. The Spirit of the Lord will say, when you create the mood, I will move. When you create the mood, I will move. I tell you, the mood is created. The mood has been created. God has nothing to do than to move among us. God has nothing to do than to move among us. God has nothing to do than to move among us. And as the Lord moves, sicknesses will leave. As the Lord moves, depression will leave. As the Lord moves, anxieties will leave. As the Lord moves, chains will be broken. You want to do me this favor? Now, the woman with the issue of blood. Bible said when she touched Jesus. When she touched Jesus. Sometimes we wait to be called. Sometimes we want to be touched. But this morning, ha, Kandaba, if the master is not touching you, you got to go ahead and touch the master. If the master is not touching you, you got to disconnect yourself from the comfort zone and go ahead and touch the master. It is not always that he will mention your case, <laughs> but you have to take your case to him. And when you take your case to him, he will not put you into shame. He will glorify himself through you. Lord, I bless you for this atmosphere. I acknowledge your presence among the congregation of the mighty. This morning we ask that have your way among us. Because it is all about you. It is not about any man. Holy Spirit, I hand over right now. And I say take over. I hand over right now. And I say take over. And when you take over, our season of pains will be over. 
when you take over our season of depression will be over when you take over our seasons of pains will be over right now we give you access and we say invade our service invade our service invade our service invade our service let there be a notable testimony this morning among your people i pray that there will be miracles among us there will be miracles among us let signs and wonders of god be seen among us lord i pray that your word will not come with enticing words of men but it will be the demonstration of the power of the most high god and as your people live they will live liberated i speak liberty in the realms of the spirit i subdue every territorial spirit this morning in the name of jesus christ and i say lord give us a receptive heart that we will receive from you alone i bless you in jesus name amen It is an honor to be here this morning. It is a great privilege to be given the opportunity to stand on these holy grounds. And I salute the senior pastor, Reverend Stephen, for the privilege to be here this morning. Let's, let's give it to him. I also salute the wife wherever they are. I send my holy salutation to them. Thank you, Pastor Lee, uh, for welcoming me. And thank you all. I, I thank leadership also for the great job that you guys are doing. Um, this morning, the Lord will do us good. The Lord will do us good. The Lord will do us good. Hallelujah. The Lord will do us good. 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 This morning, you need to expect. See, if, if you don't expect anything, you're not going to receive anything. If you don't expect from the Lord, you are not going to receive anything from the Lord. Your point of expectation plays a vital role as far as your miracle is concerned. If you will expect from him, he will give it to you. For Bible says the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut off. All you need to do is to expect from the Lord to move. Hallelujah. Now, the sister that gave the testimony. Can you come forward? And let me say this. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm from the roots. Oh. If I say I'm from the roots, you know what I'm talking about. I'm way deep from Africa. Oh. And I have an accent, so just bear with me. I may not be able to speak like you guys speak over here. But I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord will minister to you. Hallelujah. This morning, I'm not here to speak a different word. But I'm coming to add to what has been spoken in this house. Because it is the same spirit, it is the same Lord, it is the same king over all. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now, in, 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 in our church, this month is our month of testimony. Okay, it's a month of testimony. And until you go through the test, you will not have a testimony. If, if you want to share a testimony, be ready to go through the test. Hallelujah. And as, as you were sharing your testimony, spiritually, I saw that the Lord is taking your ministry into a different dimension. For the Lord will say, I take you through this so that you will be able to take others through it. Because what you have not experienced, you cannot share. And the Lord will say, the hedges are about to be lifted around you. The pillar of fire is about to be lifted around you. For the Lord will say, right now I'm touching your ministry in the area of songs. When you begin to minister, them that mourn in Zion, they will be comforted. When you begin to minister, them that are sick, they will begin to be healed. When you begin to minister, the dead will begin to rise up. When you begin to minister, the lame will begin to walk. For your ministry is taking a different shape. Your ministry is taking a different dimension. For the Lord will look upon his word to perform it even in your life. Yes, Lord. I pray that the heavens will be open over you. And I release fresh oil upon you. 
fresh oil from the throne room of grace. Ah, Lima Zukapa. Right now, the Lord is training your hands for war. And the Lord is training your fingers for battle. The Lord is training your hands for war and your fingers for battle. For great and mighty things are about to be done in and through you. For the Lord will say, because you have testified, because you have glorified my name in the assembly of the Almighty. Ah, Zikapanda, I'm about to do great and mighty things in your life. That which your mind cannot comprehend. That which has not entered into the hearts of men. That which men have not seen with their eyes. That is what I'm about in and done through your life. That is what I'm about to do in and through your life. Your life will be a testimony. Your life will be the evidence. Your life will be a testimony. Your life will be the evidence. I use you as a point of contact. And I lift your entire family before God. I pray that let every chain of addiction be broken in your family. Let every chain of addiction be broken in your family. Let every chain of addiction be broken in your family. And I speak the peace of the Lord into your family. I speak the peace of the Lord into your family. Every child in your family is being arrested into the kingdom of God right now. Every child in your family is being arrested into the kingdom of God right now. The Lord will use the children in your family as instruments in the in the vineyard of the Most High God. The Lord is arresting their minds. Yes, Lord. We rebuke every peer pressure in the children, even in your family. And we are asking the Spirit of the Lord to take over every child in your family. Academically, they will excel. Academically, they will excel. Academically, they will excel. Academically, they will excel in the name of Jesus. You will honor your word and all the nations will know that we are serving a living God. And all the nations will know that we are serving the God of truth. Just, just, just clap for Jesus. Just clap for Jesus. I bring you greetings from I bring you greetings from Praise Church where I fellowship. I bring you greetings from my senior pastor Michael and Nancy and the entire Praise Church family. And I'm honored to be here with my family also, my wife Mary, my daughter Melissa, and my two boys Miles and Malachi. Hallelujah. So, as I was told to minister this morning, I said, Lord, it has to be a noun word. Yes. Not the logos, but the rhema. Yes. Hallelujah. You know, when, when God asked Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac, he just said, take your son, your only son, and then go and sacrifice him for me. That was the word. Now, so this guy embarked on the journey to go and sacrifice his son. Now, they made the altar. He has the knife. He has everything. The guy was on the altar. He was about to slaughter the son. But there was another word. If there had not been a noun word, Abraham would have killed Isaac. See, we, 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 we don't always have to live on the previous word. Because the God we are serving is a speaking word. It's a speaking Lord. He is always speaking. It's good for us to have revelation yesterday. But sometimes you need a now revelation. I tell you, if, if the guy had not received a now word, he would have killed his boy. And most of the times we may have killed our Isaacs because we didn't get a now word. Not because God was not speaking, but because we were not paying attention to what God is speaking. As a Lord, it has to be a word in season. It has to be a word that will bring a confirmation in somebody's life. 
It should be a word that will bring a transformation in somebody's life. It should be a word that will bring the answer they've been asking for years. It should be the solution that they needed now. Because he's a living God. It has to be a living word. It shouldn't be a dead word. Amen. And the Lord will say, go to their website and look at their vision statement. So when I went, it said the vision of the Shepherd's Fold Ministries is to empower people by encouraging them so they may encourage others. By teaching them so they may teach others and by being a blessing to them and the goal so they may go in and out and be a blessing to others for the glory of the Lord. This is your vision statement. Yes. To be encouraged so that you will go out there and encourage someone. To be taught so that you will go out there and teach someone. To be blessed so that you will go out there and be a blessing unto somebody. Beloved, you can't give what you do not have. Yes, you, you can't go about encouraging people if you don't have encouragement. You can't go about blessing people if you are not blessed. You can't give what you do not have. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why? Because he had a son. You can't give what you don't have. So when we come together, the Lord will impact us so that we will impact our generation. The Lord will fill us so that we will go out there and change the life of the community. That is the mandate of this ministry. Amen. You can't be discouraged and be encouraging somebody. Amen. You can't be broken and be amending somebody. I say you can't share what you have not experienced. You can't testify what you have not gone through. So the Lord will take you through for you to be able to testify. You see, the church is rising up. The church is rising up. There is a great awakening. There is a mighty revival that is about to sweep this house. It is going to begin from today. It is going to begin from today. I don't know, but as many as are willing and obedient, they will be partakers of what the Lord is about to do in this season. And as I look at your, your, your vision statement, all, all I can tell is that now this, this church is an agent of influence to influence our community. See, the Lord wants to uh, bring the kingdom culture of heaven in our neighborhood through a ministry like this. God will affect the cause of our, of our system through a community of citizens who are you and I so that we will implement the purpose of God on earth, the intent of God on earth, the lifestyle of God on earth, and the kingdom culture of God on earth. That is why we are here. So when they see you, they should see encouragement. Because you are here to be encouraged so that you will go encourage them. When they see you, they say, know that the teacher has arrived. Because you have been taught, you have been fed here for you to go out there and then teach them. When they see you, they should see that the vessel of blessing has arrived. And once you have arrived, you just have to release your blessings upon them. The Lord said, talk to them on the subject. The church in the world, but not the world in the church. The church in the world, but not the world in the church. The church in the world, but not the world in the church. Now, let me lay some foundations regarding the two key words in my um, team. Church and then world. Church and then world. Now, so what is the church? So... First of all, understand that the church is not a building. It is when we come together like this, that we call it a church. When we leave, there is nothing like church service taking place. When we leave, it's just going to be the building, instruments, and what have you. 
It is when we come together that it is called the church. <laughs> so the Greek word for the church is ecclesia, which means the called out ones. The called out ones. We, we are the called out ones. We've been called from somewhere and we have assembly somewhere doing something that is acknowledging God as our Lord and personal Savior. This is where the church comes in. Now, in the book of 1 Timothy chapter uh, 3, verse 15, the Bible says, And if I'm delayed, you will know how people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the foundation of truth. The first thing I want you to know is that the church is the pillar of truth. Amen. The church is the pillar of truth. And when we talk about pillar, we are talking about witnessing. The church is there to witness Christ. See, it says, you will be my witnesses when the Spirit of the Lord comes upon you. He said, when the, you will receive power after the Holy Ghost come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The church is meant to witness Christ. Yeah. But hear this. You can't witness what you have not seen. When, when they go to the law court, they will say, bring me a witness. A witness is somebody who saw what happened, who heard what happened, who has experienced what happened. So if the Lord is saying that, you will be my witness. The Lord is saying that I will open your eyes to see so that you will tell them. I will open your ears to hear so that you will tell them. I will cause you to experience my goodness so that you will go and express it unto them. That is the mandate of the church. You see, the foundation of truth, the base of truth. What is the truth? The truth talks about the virgin birth. The living God, the truth talks about the virgin birth, the living God in Jesus, the living God in Jesus, the death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and then the coming of, of Jesus again. That is the truth. That he is God, but he made himself a man. That he came through the virgin bed. That he died. That, that on the third day he resurrected. That he ascended. He seated on the right hand side of the father. And he's coming back again. That is the truth. And that is what we testify. The foundation of truth. Huh. The church is the redeem of the Lord. The church is the gateway of heaven. You remember when Jacob encountered the angel of the Lord. He said, this is no other place than the house of God, the gate of heaven. So, you see, you are the church. When they see you, they should know that you are the portals that send them to heaven. In other, in other words, when they see you, they should see the manifestation of heaven being revealed on earth. That is you and I. The mandate of this ministry. Now, the word world appears about 185 times in the New Testament. But the word world does not mean the same thing in different contexts. For instance, the Bible says, for God so loved the world. Now, the word world in that scripture is talking about humanity. Souls, you and I. The Bible says, do not love the world or anything in it. The word world is talking about earthly pleasure. In that particular scripture, he said, what good is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? He's talking about material possession. And he said, for we brought nothing into this world. He's talking about the system. So the word world means different things based on the context it is being used in the Bible. The word world is the Greek word cosmos. That is K-O-S-M-O-S. The word cosmos means governing authority, systems of control, and powers of influence. Now, the church in the world, but not the world in the church. So the church is meant to be in the governing authority. The church is meant to be in the systems of control. The church is meant to be in the powers of influence. Amen. Amen. The church in the world, but not the world in the church. Bible says we are in the world, but not of the world. We are in the world, but not of the world. What is he talking about? He's saying that, see, the substance that, that were made out of you, or the substance that, that made you, were not from this world. But you are in the world. If I may go to Genesis. He said, you see, there were, there, were, there, were, there were two words that were used 
for the creation or the formation of man. He said, and the Lord God took dust and then formed man out of the dust. And I said, and the Lord God created them, male and female, two words, form and then create. Now, in the Hebrew word, one has to do with bara, which means to form out of something. So part of you came out of something, that is the dust. He took the dust and then he formed something called your body. And then the word asa is to create. To create means to bring something out of nothing. So part of you came out of something, part of you came out of nothing. The part of you that came out of something is the body. The part of you that came out of nothing is the spirit that God breathed into you. So you don't tell me you are a creator. There is only one creator. For you to be a creator, you need to start from zero. Perhaps just say I'm an inventor. Because you, you use something to bring that into existence. But for you to call yourself a creator, then you got to start from zero. Hallelujah. So part of you came out of something, the earth. Part of you came out of nothing, God himself. And then God breathed himself into you. We are in, in the world. You may in the world, the body, but not off. Because the substance that made us is not a substance from this world. Hallelujah. Hear this. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. Because God decided to pour himself out into you. So you see, when they see you, they should see the manifestation of God on earth. That is why you are here to be taught so that you will go out there and teach them. That is why you are here to be encouraged so that you will go out there and encourage them. That is why you are here to be blessed so that you will go out there and bless them. Amen. We are in the world, but not of the world. So the church has to be 